Creating a multi-billion dollar fashion company is no easy feat. Many have tried and failed to produce creative, wearable clothing that the masses love. However, today we are going to tell the story of the tennis player who created the incredibly famous fashion brand, Lacoste. And not only did he not fail in his venture, he really didn't even try very hard. The tale of the crocodile tennis player who invented Lacoste and turned it into a multi-billion dollar company is a story that you won't believe until you hear it. René Lacoste was an immensely famous French-born tennis player, but before his rise to athletic stardom, René was just a regular Parisian boy from an upper-class family who loved to play tennis. Born in 1904, by the age of 15 in 1919, René was already completely enthralled with the sport of tennis and had decided he wanted to pursue a professional career. Some people, including René's father, Jean-Jules Lacoste, did not believe that the young man had what it took to become a truly successful professional tennis player. But what he lacked in skill, he made up for in passion. Soon, he convinced his father that this was the right path for him. And thank goodness he did. Although, it's important to note that there was one condition for his father's newfound support. René had to become a world champion in only five years. Otherwise, he would have to select another career path for his life. He began the intense training of a champion, but when he entered his first professional competition, the 1922 Wimbledon Championships, he lost in the very first round. Although disappointed in himself, René Lacoste was not a quitter, and he went on to make it to the fourth round of his next try. Only three years later, in 1925, René won his first title at the French Championships, and at the next Wimbledon, he finally took home the title by beating his fellow countryman, Jean Borada. During this time, there were several incredible French tennis players, and René was making a name for himself as one of the four musketeers alongside Henri Cochet, Jean Borada, and Jacques Toto Brugnon. He continued to both beat and lose to these other fantastic players over the next few years, but one thing was for sure, René Lacoste was one of the best tennis players on the planet, and he had certainly made his father proud by becoming a world champion in less than five years. Over his entire career, which only lasted 10 years, René won seven Grand Slam singles titles, and he was named the number one tennis player in the world by the Daily Telegraph. But as we are about to find out, René Lacoste was much more than a phenomenal tennis player. During his rise to fame in the tennis community and around the world, René Lacoste gained the nickname The Crocodile. Now, exactly where this nickname came from is up for debate as several stories have been told to explain it. Many said that this nickname came from his intensity and determination on the court, which led the young player to always go for the jugular. As well, it was said that he always played on the back of the court and essentially slithered back and forth with grace and strength. One rumor is that the American journalist who watched Lacoste surprisingly beat Bill Turnbill at the U.S. Championships in 1926 actually named him the Crocodile for the first time. But others, including his son Bernard, agree that the nickname was awarded after René won a piece of alligator skin luggage in a bet. The alligator was apparently translated from French into Crocodile in English and then became the player's favorite title. No matter why the nickname was given, it stuck, and René Lacoste became the crocodile. We know that René adored this nickname he acquired because he proceeded to embroider a crocodile on his blazer shortly after that he would wear on and off the court. Lacoste proudly wore his crocodile blazer for the next five years to every match, and then something amazing happened. While playing tennis, René was not only focused on how to improve his skill set, but also on how tennis outfits were hindering his abilities. At the time, players were wearing long sleeve button up shirts, and René noticed that this style actually decreased flexibility and movement. Therefore, he decided to design a more comfortable short sleeve polo shirt. In 1933, he started the company La Societe Chemis Lacoste. He worked with a French knitwear company to create his designs, of course, with the crocodile embroidered on the breast. 
The jersey knit shirt was considered to be completely revolutionary for tennis players, and the sportswear's popularity grew rapidly. As part of their marketing ploy, Lacoste polo shirts were called the status symbol of the competent sportsman. Although Lacoste was doing well in Europe, René could not figure out how to incorporate and share his sportswear in the United States. But that all changed in 1950 when he joined forces with the already successful American company IZOD. The new brand IZOD Lacoste produced René's designs in the USA and marketed them for athletics and leisure activities. Until this time, Lacoste only produced white shirts. However, with IZOD on board, they began creating colored prints with the iconic crocodile as well. Over the next two decades, Lacoste became an international sensation and was being worn all over the world. And of course, in addition to the original knitwear polo shirts, they also added caps, pants, shorts, and other varieties of sports shirts and much, much more to the brand. It's important to understand that while René absolutely excelled in creating his popular fashion brand, the inventive and innovative businessman also brought a few other inventions into the world of tennis. René is accredited with creating the tennis ball machine that all players use today for practice. And he also invented the steel tennis racket. Before Lacoste, tennis players used a wooden racket, which didn't provide nearly as much force as the new steel rackets. In fact, Lacoste created 20 patents throughout his lifetime. So it's safe to say that he was not only one of the world's best tennis players and fashion icon, but also one of the world's most adept inventors. While René retired from tennis in 1932, he continued to work tirelessly on his Lacoste clothing brand and his various other inventions for the next 30 years. However, in 1964, his son Bernard Lacoste officially took over the company. Although Izod Lacoste continued to do well in the USA, the parent company of Izod went bankrupt in the 1970s. Therefore, they were forced to sell the Lacoste half of the company back to French ownership. Luckily, Lacoste was able to establish their own brand without Izod shortly after due to the now high demand for their products. Lacoste did extremely well during the 70s and 80s, selling more than 300,000 items yearly. And one of the main reasons for his success was the new preppy fashion trend in which the Lacoste brand fit perfectly. The polo shirt was seriously in style, and not just for athletes. Americans and people worldwide wore Lacoste shirts as stylish everyday wear. From men and women to school children, there really wasn't anyone who didn't wear Lacoste. Part of the charm of the brand was that it could be worn by someone of any gender or age. And while the clothes weren't affordable at all, they weren't so expensive as to be impractical or unfeasible for the masses. Of course, other entrepreneurs always try to ride the coattails whenever a company is successful. And in 1977, a company known as La Tigre did exactly that. They created a shirt almost identical to Lacoste's, but with a tiger instead of a crocodile. But because Lacoste was already such a beloved and respected brand, there really was no competition. In fact, many considered owning a La Tigre polo shirt inferior to owning an original Lacoste. Therefore, sales for the Crocodile brand actually increased after La Tigre sportswear hit the shelves. In 1996, René Lacoste passed away at 92 years old. But the good news is that before he died, he was able to see his beloved Crocodile t-shirts become one of the most worn items of clothing on the planet. Although it may seem like Lacoste was at its absolute peak at the end of the 20th century, the company continued to grow in both popularity and financial success after the new millennium. When René started his soon-to-be empire in 1933, he hired André Guillier as the creative director. And although Guillier did exceptionally well in creating fantastic and popular clothing, once René passed away, his son Bernard decided to hire a new creative director, Christophe Lemaire. Lemaire truly changed Lacoste. He decided that in addition to the ready-to-wear sport-like clothing, he would also create a luxury line that appealed to the wealthy fashionistas of the world. In addition to clothing, Lacoste now offered shoes, glasses, perfume, watches, and much more, which were all incredibly successful. In 2005, the rings were once again passed to another Lacoste, Michael, Bernard's younger brother. 
And luckily for the brand, Michael proved to be just as fantastic a leader as his brother and father. He created an online site in 2007, which increased the brand's sales and brought it into the future. Lacoste clothing is now created and sold around the entire world through both online and in-store sales. And although fashion trends are constantly changing, the company's ability to stay modern while staying true to its classic style has allowed them to remain one of the most financially viable and stylish brands of all time. Today, Lacoste uses popular celebrities, including tennis players and other athletes, to promote their clothing and accessories. In fact, Hintz Novak, the famous tennis player, was named not only the ambassador of the brand but also the new crocodile in 2017. So the legacy of the original crocodile, Rene Lacoste, lives on in both the world of tennis as well as the fashion industry. The Lacoste Foundation was also started in order to remember Rene Lacoste, which helps children enjoy athletics and learn sports in school. Lacoste is now worth an incredible $1 billion, and the brand sells over 50 million products every single year. What the young crocodile Rene Lacoste created with just an embroidered crocodile has now impressively been one of the most popular fashion brands on the planet for almost an entire century. Hungry for another fascinating business story? Click on the following video to hear the crazy story about the prisoner who created Lamborghini.